guys, it's G Canoics here once again and today, this morning, I'm going to be bringing you some further elaboration and clarification with regard to the derivation of the classical aggregate supply curve. So this is the continuation of our A2 macroeconomics course and you will remember, I hope, that last week we got to the point where we had already established that the classical aggregate supply curve was perfectly inelastic, as illustrated here, leading to this level of real output which classical economists, economists refer to as the rate at which there is a natural rate of unemployment. And we talked in the previous video about the fact that this was due to the instantaneous adjustment with regard to prices and wages in order to maintain the real wage. And, I so, and so I thought it would be useful at this point to just consider how the classical aggregate supply curve then relates to what is going on in the labour market within the classical scenario. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's get stuck into this. Let's say, for example, that point A gives rise in the classical scenario to a price level of PA. And that then clears the labour market at this point Q star W over P star. So PA clears the labour market at this point. And as a consequence of that, real output will obviously be at this point YN. So let's now consider a little bit, in a little bit more detail what we were looking at the other day with regard to changes in the price level and then how adjustments take place in the labour market in this instance. So what if, ladies and gentlemen, what if the price level in <coughs> the, <coughs> excuse me, in the AS diagram, what if the price level increased to B? And so we are therefore left with a price level of PB. What would go on in the labour market in order to ensure that the labour market cleared once again at WP star Q star? Well, let's think about this. If the price level goes up, what happens to the real wage? Well, price levels rise. The money wage, the top line, stays the same. Therefore, people can afford to buy a smaller basket of goods than they could previously. So the value of the real wage, W over P, the value of that will therefore obviously fall. Now where would that then put us on our labour market diagram? Well, a falling real wage would mean that we would then be beneath W over P star. So we would be down here somewhere at W over P B. And as a consequence, you can see, ladies and gentlemen, this is a point of, one might call it, disequilibrium in the labour market. Because as you can see here, the supply of labour is much less than the demand for labour. And that makes sense, doesn't it? The demand for labour will be much higher because the wage is lower. Therefore, firms think to themselves, oh, well, let's employ more people because it's more cost effective. However... What do classics argue about these markets? Classical economists would argue that these markets will adjust instantaneously to this change in the price level. And they argue that the market will adjust instantaneously in order to ensure that the market clears once again at WP star Q star. Now effectively, in order to make that happen, what, what needs to happen? We need to be moving up the supply curve and we need to be moving up the demand curve. We need to see movements along both of those curves. Now in order to make that happen, ladies and gentlemen, what will have to happen? Well, we need to be moving back here to WP star. So equilibrium needs to be re-established at WP star. We've already seen that there has been a reduction, sorry, an increase in the price level, so in terms of W over P, the bottom line has increased. Now in order to restore things, there will need to be an increase in the money wage. And if that happens, 
equilibrium will once again be restored at W over P. We will move up the supply curve, we will move up the demand curve, so that we re-establish equilibrium at this point. And as a consequence, even if the price level rises to B, equilibrium in the labour market still rests at WP star Q star, and hence we have this, this vertical section of the classical aggregate supply curve. Okay. What if, ladies and gentlemen, rather than an increase in the price level, we encounter a reduction in the price level to point C? So now we're operating at PC. Well, again, think about it in terms of what's happening to the real wage. Prices are now lower. Your money goes further. You can afford to buy a larger basket of goods. So W over P has in effect increased. The value of your real wage has in effect increased because the price level has fallen. Now once again, where would that place us on the labour market diagram beneath? Which is, of course, as classical economists think, fully flexible and instantaneous adjustment. It would put us here, ladies and gentlemen. W over P C. Now let's look at this again. This is another point of disequilibrium because of course the supply of labour in this instance is much bigger than the demand for labour. So what needs to happen on this occasion in order to clear the labour market? The price level needs to fall. Sorry, we've already had a fall in the price level, haven't we? Not only does the price level need to fall, the money wage needs to fall. So we need to be moving down the demand curve and down the supply curve in order to re-establish equilibrium in the labour market at WP star Q star. We already know that the price level has fallen in terms of our real wage. The bottom line has fallen. So in order to cure this problem and to cure this disequilibrium in the labour market, the money wage also needs to fall by the same proportion and that will re-establish equilibrium at WP star and Q star. And as you know, classics again, they say that this will take place instantaneously. Instant this notion of instantaneous adjustment, very important. Now the other thing which is very important here, ladies and gentlemen, which is totally counter to what Keynesians would argue, and this is why we get the kink in the Keynesian aggregate supply curve, we are saying here that in order to move from W over PC back to equilibrium, individuals, employees, are perfectly willing to take a pay cut, a cut in their money wage. Now that is totally counter to what Keynes argues, because Keynes argues that wages, whilst people will take an increase in their money wage, wages, Keynes says, are sticky in a downwards direction. And it's that stickiness, ladies and gentlemen, in the downwards direction, which means that the Keynesian aggregate supply curve ends up with the kink in it. So we'd end up somewhere about here, A, B, C, and hence the Keynesian aggregate supply curve being that very familiar shape to us. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what I'd like to deal with in the next video, where we derive the Keynesian aggregate supply curve. So I'm going to leave it at that, ladies and gentlemen, but I hope you can see that... In the classical scenario, regardless of whether price level is A or B or C, because of this instantaneous adjustment in the labour market, we always end up at equilibrium, WP star, Q star, fulfilling this notion of the natural rate of unemployment. Okay, ladies and gents, that's it for today. Bye for now.